going to remove the face of the SID panel now and I'm actually just going to use this screwdriver and I'll show you how to do it. Um, insert the screwdriver here between the panel and the unit itself. Just be very careful so that you don't scratch anything. Um, and then just pry it in here and it and uh, press back and pry it out. And you see it just pops right out. And then you can um, easily pull it out. Or, you know, just gingerly pull it out. And then that's how you get it out. And it's important to try and do this before you order your piece because then you'll know if you have an SID 1 or an SID 2. I happen to have an SID 2, and that's how I knew which pixel ribbon to purchase. Here in the back I'm showing you there's a there's a clip that you just unclip and then the, uh, the rest of it comes out pretty easily. Here is the back of the unit where there are four screws to remove and these all have uh, star bits. Several swearing words later, I just want to show you, I learned this one the hard way. Make sure in the back before you pull everything off the front that you go ahead and remove this um, cover. That's where two of those four screws came from because you can see on the underside it's got these um, caps and that that was holding the unit in when I was trying to yank it out unsuccessfully so thankfully I didn't break anything but uh, take this off before you try and pull everything out. Once you've taken that cover off it will just slide out quite easily. So yeah, like I said, I learned the hard way. Remove two more screws, same size torque bit as the four already removed. Uh, one up in the front and then the other one up here. Then on the underside there is one final screw in the center. I've taken the faceplate off and now I can see exactly what was the problem with my pixels. The, I can, you can see on the ribbon that it wasn't quite connecting and that a lot of the connection has actually deteriorated so it's pretty easy to see through. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the old ribbon and clean up the contact points and then I'm going to put on my new ribbon. I'm going to clean the contacts now and I have everything on a non-static surface so that I don't ruin any of the components and I don't have any alcohol to clean it which would probably be the best way to clean it so I'm actually going to use acetate. All that I have is a nail polish remover so I'm going to use the acetate of the nail polish remover in a soft cloth so just a, a, a cotton swab and then I'm going to uh, gently clean the contacts so that I can get this old glue off before I attempt to put the new stuff on. Here's a close-up to show you that it's important not to skip the step of cleaning the contacts. I've done the left side and the right side is the old adhesive from before. So if I didn't clean it off, then the contacts wouldn't be exact and I'd probably lose more pixels. I've bent the adhesive paper back so that I can adhere uh, the correct half and I'll just line up the connection points. There are I think you can see now there are lines and they'll they will just line up um, right on top of each other and it'll be important to get these correct and so I'll do it slowly. It's pretty easy to see if you've lined it up or not. I'm just going to move it back and forth and uh, you can see what happens. So obviously you don't want to be able to see through it and that's how you'll know if you've had it lined up. Moving on to the next portion which is the face of the lighted unit and I'm going to be very careful to not do anything to this rubber band and then it'll just uh, lift out actually there's one clip here so to be careful of that but um, it actually lifts out pretty easily. Unclip that front part and um, show you the lifting out how easy it is actually. Okay, here's the last piece to remove. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off just like I did with the other piece and then clean the contacts. I've removed all the adhesive from the glass plate and I'm going to now attach the rest of the ribbon and under the glass here, I don't know that you can tell, it's almost impossible to show and nearly impossible to see as well that the contact points on this piece are actually clear and 
They're extremely difficult to see, but maybe you can see them now that I lined them up with the strip down there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, line this up and get it finished up. I have the ribbon on both sides, and I'm just going to use my fingernail to press down on the contact points and make sure it's adhered very well. So now I'm seeing where saving money is actually biting me in the butt because my uh, pixel strip is not adhering very well and other some of the other kit combos had come with a piece of foam or some other type of adhesive to make sure the connection points are good. So I've got two options here. I took a rubber band and I cut it. So I might, I'm either going to use a glue stick and adhere the rubber band to the to the contact point, or I also have uh, some mounting tape here so I can just um, cut it to size and use it like other kits had. Well, the rubber band worked really well, so what do they say? Necessity is the mother of all invention. I'm putting the final pieces together, and I am someone with profound patience, but good grief. <laughs> I'm, I'm So I'm holding the strip down. Okay, I'm assembling the last piece. I'm holding down the strip so that it doesn't come undone, and it's going to be very difficult, but I have to get the prongs in here onto the into the other prongs in the back. Let's see if, how much I can keep everything in place right there. I don't even know that the camera is showing anything. No, nope, I lost it, so I'm going to have to re-adhere it. Attempt number 278. No, I'm just kidding. But this is getting a little ridiculous. My profound patients are wearing thin. Line that up and see if I lost the connection point in the back. I'm pretty sure I did. Here's attempt number three billion. And I've lost contact with the sheet a number of times. So at this point, who even cares if they're lined up? I just want them to be in the ballpark. Um, so I'm going to just keep trying and hopefully one of these times it will work without coming out on me. And um, let's see again. This is attempt 3 billion at least. I'm getting there. I can tell that it still adhered, finally. Oh, I don't know if I like that sound, if I lost uh, adhesion or not. Okay, seriously, maybe telling time in my car is a luxury that I don't need. At this point, I don't know. Rule number one, if you're having problems, step back and look at the steps that you've gone through. I just discovered that I was trying to put it on backwards. I had the LCD screen in upside down, and the point of this little rubber band here is to hold the contact points on pretty well. So I had it upside down and it wasn't holding the contact points. So now that I have it the correct side up, I'm going to go ahead and try and uh, re-adhere it and put it in correctly. Now you can see I have it screwed in and everything's holding in place. So now all I have to do is... Um, put the LCD screen back on the backlight here and there's that clip right there that I have to watch out for because the ribbon's going to come up and over it. Okay, one more problem. So here's the clip that I'm trying to get it in and I'm noticing that the old cable had a hole in it and this one does not have the hole. So you can see where before it would have just fit around this no problem, but this one doesn't have a hole. So to compensate for that, I'm going to go ahead and put the foam tape that I um, had from before. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the contact and perhaps not clip it into place and then use the rubber that's going to hold it on. I'm going to use the rubber with the foam and that, that will 
hold the contacts into place if I can't get it in entirely. I've finished mounting it, and I think that was a good idea using the foam tape because it's the foam tape making connection with the rubber band um, because I couldn't quite get it into the clip be due to the lack of a hole here. And I, I hesitate to make a hole in this one because it didn't come that way. Uh, so let's just see if this works the way I built it. I am going to gently put the face back on and continue reassembling. Now I'm going to put the outside cover on. done. I got those last four screws in and thanks for sticking with me. I made so many shortcuts so I'm really anxious to see if this works or not. Let's go try it out. Okay I've reattached everything and I'm not going to put it in all the way because I still have to figure out now what I'm going to do with the emergency flashers. Um, let's test out and see how it looks. Oh, super. It looks like I actually made it worse. So, yep, pretty sure it's worse. Well, now I got to go back to the drawing board and uh, see what else can be done. Okay, I've disassembled it again, and I saw that the connection wasn't so great at the bottom, so I went ahead and I did um, make a hole in this one so that the clip could full pull onto the front of it. I went out and tested it out and I found that uh, A, I wasn't drinking enough so I've opened a beer and that's going to help me. <laughs> um, and B, that the connection points just still aren't connecting well enough so I think I'm going to go ahead and try the, the, um, the heat method and see if I can't get it to work better this time. Okay, so the heat method, I've removed the foam tape, and since I don't have a soldering iron, I do have a curling iron, and I've got the curling iron on hot heat, and I'm going to go ahead and use this curling iron to apply the heat to the connections here and try to seal it with heat before I reapply the foam. I think that may have been exactly the issue, and since I bought this ribbon cable on the internet, it didn't come with any instructions, but it's pretty clear after I used the curling iron that it adhered just fine, and now I'm not having any of those issues that I was having before, so as soon as I hit it with heat, everything stuck, so that might have been my exact problem, so I'm going to replace the foam. There we go. With a little bit of modifications, I was able to complete it. Obviously the curling iron worked. And I got this clip here finally to hold it in place. And this is my last stitch effort, so let's hope it worked. And uh, thank you to the beer. Right, and here's the conclusion of my final attempt after the iron. And as you can see, um, I just pulled the emergency cord out. I'm going to have to do something about this seal later, but um, at least I finally have access to the emergency blinkers this time. And I'll go ahead and just put it in for good because I'm done dealing with this. Um, so it's good. and It's real classy. I'm just going to let that hang out. So let's see if it worked after the curling iron. It's a lot better than it was before. I still have a few pixels out, um, but gosh, it's a lot better than it was before. So definitely um, a curling iron helps. Wow, wonderful. I can finally tell the time and the temperature. So great. Um, maybe I would, you know, if I really cared about the extra pixels, I'll keep my eye on it. Um, I might go and buy a, a soldering iron, but as you can see, uh, Curling iron worked just fine.